Today I'm going to share with you guys the top 10 items that you should keep in your freezer if you're on the keto diet. This is a sequel to the video I put out a few months ago on the top 10 items to keep in your refrigerator. If you haven't seen that video, then make sure you click up here to watch. We're going to take a tour of my freezer and I'm going to share with you guys the top foods that I always stock up on. Let's go take a peek. <music> brought you out here into my garage. We have a garage freezer and refrigerator for overstock foods. So let's take a look and see what's inside the freezer. This thing is packed and that's kind of how we like it. We like to have it stocked full of meats mostly and then I have some other items too. The first item that you should always have in your freezer is meat. And of course, we're on the keto diet, a lot of us eat a lot of meat. Um, unless you're vegan or vegetarian, then this video is probably not for you because the majority of the items in here are animal-based. As you can see, we have a lot of different types of meat in here, and I have them organized into sections. So this first section over here on this top shelf is ground beef. I have a lot of different packages of ground beef. We buy it in bulk and then portion it out into one pound increments. This just makes it easy when I'm cooking different recipes. Most recipes involved either like one pound or a half one and a half pounds or two pounds of ground beef and then on this side we have a lot of our steaks um, I get these at Costco this is the I think this one's choice we try and buy prime just because it, it's fattier and it tastes better um, this is a choice cut of a New York and then I have some other ones. I think we have, oh, down here is some overfill. We recently did a trip to Costco and stocked up. Um, so this is a ribeye steak. So we have tons of steak in here. And then on this side, I try and keep my pork products. Um, there's a giant pork shoulder roast back there, a smaller one here, and some ground sausages that we get from a local butcher shop. And whenever possible, we try to obtain grass-fed meat. It doesn't always work that way. Like I know a lot of these, this meat, like the steaks especially were from Costco, which obviously they're not grass-fed, they're conventionally raised animals. But I encourage you to try and find grass-fed animals if you can, because they are higher in nutritional value, like the omega-3s and vitamin K2, CLAs, things like that. So try and get grass-fed, but if you can't just because of the price or convenience, then just go ahead and get regular meat. Down in this section, I have a hodgepodge of things. This first section has more meat. Um, we don't eat a lot of fish, but I do have some prepackaged salmon. And then this is where I like to keep a lot of our um, different types of meat. Like I have, this is um, antelope, antelope chops. We have some elk burger down here too. Um, this is ground lamb. So different types of meats that we don't eat all the time. I also keep chicken in the freezer too. I have chicken breast and chicken thighs. I actually have some ground chicken too that I use for some meatball recipes. Uh, mostly I keep chicken thighs though because they are higher in fat. The next item that I always have in my freezer is bone broth. And I actually make my own bone broth. I have a recipe for it. You guys can watch the video to see that or it's gonna be down below in the description box. I mostly make chicken bone broth, but I also do a beef bones and a trotter broth as well. And trotter broth is made out of pig feet. So I'm gonna show you my stock of bone broth first. This section, I keep all of my bone broth and I think Probably the majority of these, I try and label them, but I see some of them didn't get labeled. Uh, but the majority of these are gonna be chicken, chicken broth. Actually, I think some of these are turkey. Um, this stuff over here is turkey. This was left over from when we roasted a turkey last. And then I have beef too. This is uh, beef up here. Bone broth is really easy to freeze. I put mine into mason jars and let them vent at room temperature for a little while and don't fill them all the way up either just because you have to have room for the broth to expand once it freezes. Otherwise, you're gonna risk breaking the jar. So I put them in the mason jars, let them vent at room temperature, put them in the refrigerator until they're fully cool and then I transfer them onto the freezer. And these stay good in the freezer for around six months. Um, actually, some of these, I let them go longer than that and they're just fine. Now to make the bone broth, we need the bones. So I'm gonna show you what kind of bones I always have in my freezer. This section of my freezer, I keep the bones. And so I have to make chicken broth, I like to use chicken feet. I pick these up from US Wellness Market. I'll have their website linked down below, but they are pasture raised animals. They're cleaned 
from and they're from organic chickens then like i mentioned before i like to make trotter broth which if you guys haven't had trotter broth before it's so good it's made out of pig feet and that's where it gets the name like trot means to run like pig's feet um so that's where it gets its name it's really really good if you ever had like navy bean and ham soup and it has that really delicious ham flavor that's what this broth tastes like too it's just like that so i pick up my pig feet from u.s markets as well it's really easy to get a hold of and to make beef broth i get some beef bones um, you can use a variety of bones from bone marrow um, oxtails beef knuckles um, anything like that this broth is gonna be really high in collagen and gelatin to lots of nutrition from there now let's move on to the veggies. There's a couple of different veggies that I always have in my freezer, like frozen broccoli, frozen spinach are all great options. Whatever your favorite frozen vegetables are that are keto approved, you should stock up on them and keep them in your freezer. One of my favorite vegetables to keep in my freezer is spiralized zucchini. So if I don't really have the time to be spiralizing some zucchini, but I wanna have a pasta made out of zoonals, I can get this Always have it on hand in my freezer so it's ready to go so I can have a veggie pasta whenever I feel like it. Cauliflower rice is a total must for anyone on the keto diet as long as you like the taste of cauliflower. Uh, but it works beautifully frozen and I like to buy these little individual size packages. I buy a bunch of them. Costco also sells a big bag as well too so you guys could um, pick that one up but I like these portion controlled ones just because a lot of times we don't eat a lot of cauliflower rice and it's just nice to have it on hand when we do. And cauliflower rice can be used in a variety of recipes. You can make pizza crust out of it. You can um, use it as, of course, a rice alternative if you're gonna try and make a fried rice. So there's a lot of different things that you can use cauliflower rice in. I use it to make my Spanish rice recipe too. Um, if you guys haven't seen that video, I'll have it linked up here for you or down below in the description box. It's excellent and pairs well with any sort of Mexican inspired dish you're making. Moving on to fruit, I do keep some frozen fruit in the freezer. So there's two different types. The first type is avocado. Yes, avocado is a fruit. Avocado is actually a really good fruit to freeze. So if you have any extra avocados that you can't eat and they're going to go bad, well then you can chop them up, flash freeze them, and then bunch them together in a Ziploc bag and store them in your freezer until you need them. But you can also buy them pre-frozen too. This is avocado that I picked up from the grocery store. Like I said, they're just avocado chunks. And these make really good smoothies. I'm gonna show you how to make a smoothie recipe with these. Another food that you should always keep in your freezer if you're on the keto diet is some sort of frozen fruit. I like to keep strawberries, but sometimes I'll do a mixed berry or some raspberries. It's just nice to have it in there. If you get like a sweet tooth and you wanna make like a smoothie, which I'm gonna show you how to make in just a second, or if you're gonna make any sort of keto dessert that requires berries, it's just good to have it in here whenever you have that sweet craving. Like I mentioned, I always like to keep frozen avocado and frozen berries on hand. And I have a recipe on my website for a delicious, avocado smoothie and you can use whatever berry you want i just happen to have strawberries on hand avocado makes a smoothie very very creamy so it's an ideal substitute to a banana to a blender we're going to add one cup of ice a half a cup of frozen avocado a half a cup of frozen strawberries a half a cup of macadamia nut milk or you can use a nut milk of your choice if you want to do almond or coconut or even heavy cream that works a half a cup of water one tablespoon of coconut oil two tablespoons of swerve, or you can use monk fruit or your sweetener of choice. And I like to add a scoop of either collagen powder or some protein powder to this. And the protein powder that I love is by Perfect Keto. If you're interested in purchasing some Perfect Keto products, I'll have a link down below on where you can get a special deal right now. keep in your freezer if you're on the keto diet is butter and I you know that's one of our main fats that we cook with is butter and we buy it in bulk we get the grass-fed Kerrygold butter from Costco we buy it in bulk and we freeze some of it and I've said this before but I highly recommend getting grass-fed butter if you do not get grass-fed meat you should definitely get grass-fed butter it's worth the extra penny just to get all those extra nutrients from there from the omega-3s to the vitamin k2 to the CLAs it's highly highly recommended 
Another item that I recommend you keep in your keto freezer is gonna be pre-packaged keto foods. So I like to have these ones. These are by The Real Good Company. Um, they make enchiladas, they have pizza, they have jalapeno poppers. They even have um, a breakfast sandwiches that are really good too. So I like to keep these in here. This is just good for when you don't have anything on hand, if you didn't meal prep or you're starving and you gotta run to off to work or uh, something like that, then you can just grab one of these on the go and you have lunch. I also keep ice cream, some keto ice cream. I don't eat keto ice cream all the time, but every once in a while when you're just craving something cold and you don't wanna make something. And I also keep smart buns too. I don't eat these all that often either, but they are zero carb. These are gluten-free too. And they just, they work good. If you are craving like a hamburger bun, you don't really wanna have a bunless burger. Um, I always have these in my freezer just in case. The last thing that I recommend that you guys keep in your freezer are some freezer meals. So these are pre-made freezer meals that you're gonna make on your own. Keep them stocked in your freezer so on those nights when you're busy and you don't have a lot of time but you wanna get dinner on the table, freezer meals are the way to go. And I'm gonna show you my favorite freezer meals. Most of these are dump and go recipes where you can dump them in your Ziploc bag, throw them in the freezer, and then when you wanna cook them, you dump them back into the crock pot and let them cook for six to eight hours. So let's head back over to my kitchen and I'll show you how to make these. All right, we are back in the kitchen and I'm gonna share with you guys some of my favorite freezer meals. These are mostly dump and go recipes that you can put in your Instant Pot or your Crock Pot. And I also have a casserole recipe I'm gonna share with you guys. So follow me along as we meal prep. First up, we're making a recipe using pork tenderloin. This is a marinated Asian pork tenderloin recipe and it's a dump and go crock pot recipe. So to prep it, we're gonna add all of our ingredients to a Ziploc bag, throw it in the freezer, and then when it comes time to cook it, you're gonna thaw it out the night before and dump it in your crock pot the morning of. To a freezer bag, you wanna add one and a half to two pounds of pork tenderloin one third cup of liquid aminos. If you don't wanna use liquid aminos, you could use coconut aminos or soy sauce, but soy sauce does have carbohydrates in it. Two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, two tablespoons of lemon juice, one quarter cup of golden monk fruit or brown swerve, two tablespoons of sesame seed oil, one tablespoon of dried mustard, one and a half teaspoons of black pepper, two teaspoons of minced garlic, and a half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Give this all a good mix and we'll pop it in our freezer. When it comes time to making your pork tenderloin, we're gonna take the thawed package of your Ziploc bag and dump it entirely into your slow cooker and cook it on low for three and a half to five hours or high for two to three hours. Serve this over some broccoli slaw or some cauliflower rice and it's a delicious dinner for you. Up next is a recipe that I've already shared with you. This is my easy keto peppers and steak in a slow cooker recipe. This is something that I've already shared with you and I'll have the link up here if you wanna watch that video on how to meal prep some easy beef dinners. We can easily turn this recipe into a freezer meal. So in a Ziploc bag, you're gonna add your chuck roast, some sliced bell pepper, one half of a sliced yellow onion, half a cup of canned crushed tomatoes, three tablespoons of liquid aminos, two tablespoons of red wine vinegar, a couple dashes of hot sauce, a half a teaspoon of salt, and one teaspoon of garlic powder. Once again, shake that together until everything's fully coated and we'll pop that in our freezer. When it comes time to make this, you wanna thaw it out the night before, throw it in your slow cooker and cook for around six to eight hours on low or three to five hours on high. I love to have this over a bed of cauliflower rice or shirataki noodle rice just because it's almost like a soup-like consistency too. In that video, I also share a recipe where you can take the leftover beef and peppers and throw it in some pie crust to make a keto fajita pie. Once again, I'll have that link down below for you guys if you wanna see how to make an easy keto fajita pie. Another recipe that I always like to make to have on hand in my freezer is keto lasagna. Now this is an easy keto lasagna recipe. We're not using any sort of cabbage noodles or zucchini noodles, it's noodle -less. For this recipe, we're gonna cook up some ground beef with a little bit of onion and season it with some Italian seasoning and garlic powder. Then you're gonna add your favorite a low carb tomato sauce or marinara sauce to your ground beef. I like to use Rayo's. We're gonna add that to there, mix it all together, and now it's time to layer our lasagna. In a casserole dish, we're gonna spread a small amount of the red sauce on the bottom, and then we're gonna add our noodles. The noodles that we're using in this recipe are actually deli sliced chicken or turkey slices. 
It tastes delicious and it makes you seem like you're actually having noodles. Next, we're gonna add some dollops of ricotta cheese and a little bit of mozzarella cheese. If you don't have ricotta cheese, you can use cream cheese as well. That works just fine. Then we repeat our layers of red sauce, chicken slices, and more cheese. Cover it and we'll pop it in the freezer. You can cook this from frozen, just put it in a 400 degree oven. It'll take around 30 to 45 minutes to cook. Next up is another dump and go recipe. We're gonna be making a taco soup. To a Ziploc bag, we're gonna add one and a half pounds of ground beef, one half of a chopped onion, one chopped green bell pepper, one can of diced tomatoes with the green chilies inside, one and a half cups of chicken broth, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of cumin, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, a half a teaspoon of onion powder, a half a teaspoon of oregano, and a half a teaspoon of pepper. If you don't wanna mess with all those seasonings, you can use taco seasoning, two tablespoons of it. I'll have a link down below if you're interested in a homemade keto-friendly taco seasoning. We're also gonna throw in a bag of cauliflower rice. When you go to cook this recipe, you wanna thaw it out the night before, throw all the ingredients into your slow cooker and cook it on low for eight to nine hours. Right before you go to serve it, just chop up some cubes of an eight ounce brick of cream cheese and add it to there. This makes it really creamy. You can top with sour cream, green onions, cilantro, lime, jalapenos, avocados, all of your favorite Mexican toppings. I hope this video gave you guys ideas on foods that you should keep in your freezer and some different meal ideas that you can have ready to go on those busy weeknights. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I post a new video.